All right, you guys, it is Ross the Fig Boss. We have a extremely special fruit today. I've been waiting for this fruit more than any other variety um, this 2021 season. I have been patiently awaiting. I thought I'd actually get a taste of this much earlier than right now. Um, we are, <coughs> excuse me, we're actually after frost, as you can see here by the frost hitting our trees. Um, it is in November. We're almost approaching mid-November at this point, and I actually have a, a ripe fig, finally, from this particular tree. Um, this is called Lampira 1. And I don't want people to confuse this particular fig. I did not name it. I know somehow, inevitably, I may get some flack for the names of some of these fruits, but again, I don't name them. I haven't named a single fig, ever. Um, so, you know, this particular fruit here just so happens to have a name that shares a name with quite a few other fruits. There's a uh, Lampira preta, which is probably the most common version of Lampira that you'll, you'll hear about and you'll, you'll, um, you'll find. It's a Portuguese fig that is a San Pedro. It produces, I believe, Braba only, if I'm not mistaken, without pollination. I could be wrong. I totally forget most of the details on that fruit, but I believe that's true. I think it's a San Pedro. And for, many, for that reason, really, I don't grow it because I don't typically pay attention to many of the San Pedro types because of my climate. Um, now, there's also a Lampira from Prush, from Prush Park, actually, in California. Um, and that one is very different than this particular fruit as well, in that that one's a, quite a large, round-shaped fruit that is yellow on the outside and then kind of reddish on the inside. And some people report pretty good things about that. Um, I acquired it years ago, grew it for a number of years, and then realized that it splits a lot and then eventually got rid of it because of that splitting. Um, so this one here actually comes from a grower named uh, Thierry in France. Figues de Monde is his tag on um, the internet. That's his blog. And um, so this one comes from wherever the heck he found it. I don't, I don't know the history of this fruit. I don't know where it comes from. If you go on his website, you might actually be able to find that. And maybe I did know at one point, but now I forget. Anyway, what is interesting about this fruit and what I've been told is that it is similar-ish to the Col de Doms. And that's why I'm so excited about it because i am always been looking for a Col de Dom replacement. As you guys probably know, here on this channel, we talk a lot about particular figs that are very, very good, like Black Madeira, Celeste, Hardy Chicago, and we're trying to replace them and try to find one of them that is better tasting and also performs better here. So far, at least from what I've seen, this fig seems to perform a lot better than the Col de Doms. It's very healthy. Um, it grows very well. It sets very well. It doesn't seem to need a whole lot of light either to set the fruits. It is a very productive tree, I find. Um, the problem is, as you can see at this point of the season, is that it seems to be quite late. And I imagine this is probably when the Col de Doms would probably ripen, or even Black Madeira would ripen, if you planted it in the ground here in the Philadelphia area. It's just a very late fig. And the re whole reason I even have it in the ground is so that I can actually throw the low tunnels over top of it and give it a really good head start. And that's my plan. So typically I think this fruit will probably ripen a whole month earlier than this. Um, and this year, if we may indeed, instead, do, instead of doing the low tunnels, we may actually do some limb bending and we'll definitely get some earlier fruits. Um, so that limb bending will just protect the tree and we'll get a better idea, I think, of this variety going forward next year. But we do get an idea of what it is like now. And um, I used to have actually one of these trees in a container and I'm really kicking myself for selling it last year because I know how special this variety is gonna be. Um, 
largely based on a friend of mine who I really respect his opinion. His name's Nelson in Canada, and he lives in uh, the Toronto area, I think. So if, it, if this fig is doing well for him in a container and he really loves it, he really likes the flavor, he's been around for a very, very long time. Um, there's very few people you can truly respect in the fig community and he's definitely one of them. So he's got me all excited about this. That's really all it is. And we're gonna find out right now. Last year we got a taste of this, but it was so late as it is right now that we didn't really get a good representation of the fruit. This fruit here looks like it actually is ripe, and um, the frost may have hit this and actually sped up a little bit of that ripening process. I've had the organza bag on this for a while to protect it. Um, again, supposed to be very similar to the Col de Noms, and I think that's in the sense of the pulp. Um, also, the photos you may find of this on the internet typically are of a more elongated shape. So I imagine this one does really well with rain and moisture. And if you go to Thierry's website on Figus de Monde, his blog, you will see that he really raves about the rain resistance, the humidity resistance, all that good stuff that we desperately need here. Um, so I'm excited for this fruit, you know, for many reasons. We cut it open now. Skin seems to be a little bit tough, probably because of the frost. I just had another fig that was very similar. Yeah, this fruit looks amazing. Wowee, that looks really good. So there's definitely some uh, honey pooling there in the void. Again, here's the outside. Come on, camera. And then the inside again is this really bright red getting darker towards the center. Larger and numerous acnes. So that is quite surprising um, because to be a cold nom to me, you want that texture. So we're looking for a thick texture is really what I'm looking for in this, this fruit. Let's see what we get here. Hmm. It's very good. Pure jam. Oh man. And even like, especially for this time of the year, it's like as good as it gets. You know, this is very, very good for like almost November 15th. So I'm really happy with this. This is definitely a very highly flavored fig. Uh, it's got good complexity to it. It reminds me more so of a cross between the Col de Noms and a Black Madeira. So that's really interesting how I don't think it's either one of them. It's sort of a mix of both, which is really special. Who, who knows? That may change in the future as it is very late and that could just be this particular fruit and that's what I'm picking up. So again, this is uh, Lampira 1. Let me show you guys the tree. Very good. This tree's been here. This is its third season, I think. So you can see some of the good production up here along the branches. Even down lower, it was setting pretty well. And then all the way up the tree on pretty much almost all the nodes. Almost all the leaves represented a fruit, which is great. And you know what? I had a lot of branches of this. I had five branches of this. So some of them are a bit shaded rather than the standard four that I was going with. We have some air layers down here at the bottom, which is what I really, I've realized that I wanted to have another tree of this in a container. And I regret selling the other one that I sold last year because I'd like to evaluate this further and most of the varieties I grow have one in the ground and also one in a container, especially this one that's so good. You know, this is definitely, I think, worthy of uh, further examination. So we got a couple air layers. I'll take them off soon. Obviously we'll have a bunch of cuttings. 
Um, I thank you guys for watching this one. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Also, check out Thierry's blog if you're interested and you want to read more about this variety. There's a lot more info there than what I have available just simply because this variety is still rather new. Um, I also was told, by the way, that this is also a very hardy variety. So if you look at Thierry's website, he says this one will survive even down to zero, I think even below zero, which is incredible. Um, so it has a lot of things going for it. It's just very late, I think, is the only problem that I can foresee. But you never know. We'll see because uh, a lot of these trees didn't get the start that they should have. And it may not be as late as I think it is. It may actually be ripening in the future sometime in September. It will be all right. Anyway, guys, we'll see you soon. Again, thanks for watching. Take care.